really kind of did something I don't normally do. And I guess just because of, you know, I never touch gold and it's a super, I absolutely love it now. So I see myself incorporating more gold. How do I do this? I'm going to flip this around. There we go. So I actually have two, but this is my main one. Oh my God. Hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Katja and this week we're doing something different. We're collaborating with Christina from the Reclaim Heirloom. She challenged me with three colors in a certain technique and I did the same. Let's see what she challenged me. For this challenge, I want you to try the ragging technique. I absolutely love one of my favorite. I'm gonna send you everything that you need, including a color palette using the Annie Sloan chalk paint, Scandinavian pink, cocoa, and old white. And I'm super excited to see what you create. So you heard the challenge and we're going to do some ragging. If you watch my channel, then you know that these colors that Christina picked for me are not the colors I will pick for myself and ragging, ragging technique is not something I do very often. So it's definitely the point of this challenge is to push each other out of our comfort zone uh, to make to see how I challenge Christina, um, go to her channel and see what I uh, pick for her, what technique and what colors. We have to do some rugging, uh, but first thing first, we are going to prep this piece. Like always, we have to give it a good clean, remove this hardware, because I'm going to change that at the end and put some wood filler to close original holes. And then we will have a clean and ready piece to start the challenge. I'm going to let this dry, give it a light sand when it's dry and clean everything off the camera. And now for uh, my piece, I'm going to start by uh, painting this buffet using Scandinavian pink. Oh, that's gorgeous. Gorgeous color, gorgeous. I'm using Annie Sloan medium brush. So I'm thinking first coat, I'm just going to go ahead and apply in every which direction. And on the second coat, I'm going to add some tapping. When you're doing a ragging technique, you actually want to paint in every which direction because the finish uh, look is going to be much nicer when you have brush strokes in every which direction. And even tapping is going to look amazing. It's a very pretty color. The first coat is dry and then I apply the second coat on the sides and it looks like we are going to need three coats and that is because my first coat was uh, very thin as you can see. I prefer to apply thin coats and if I need I will apply three coats instead of thick coats. It's just something I prefer. That's the way I prefer to paint my furniture. So let's now apply the second coat on top and as soon as that is dry I'm going to add the third one and leave everything to dry overnight. I'm putting on my third and final coat and this should do it. This is giving me a full coverage. I'm going to let this dry overnight when you're using uh, rugging technique and that is because you're going to activate the paint so you want to make sure everything is nice and dry. 
I left my uh, base color to dry completely overnight. And now that I have nice and solid coverage, I'm going to do a rugging technique. Uh, and I will be doing that using Coco color and this uh, towel. So first thing I'm going to do is make watery paint. I'm going to water down the paint, not too much, but I will, and I'm going to show you how. So I'm pouring a little bit of uh, cocoa color into the cup and now I'm going to add some water to make it more watery. And now I'm going to stir to see how is the consistency. If I think it's too thick, then I'm gonna add more water. If I think it's too thin, then I'm going to add more paint. In this case, I think it's too thin and I'm going to add more paint. And what the water makes the difference, the more, the thinner it is, the lighter your uh, rugging or a wash is going to look. The thicker your uh, paint it is, the more solid the rugging is going to look. Get some paint on my brush and feel how I like the wash. I like it. So I'm going to cover everything. Now that I apply everywhere, since this is already drier than this side, because I applied it first here, I'm going to spray water all over the top and that way it's going to be even. Dryness. You get a rug and you start tapping. I wanna grab actually more rugs because I like wider. This is going to create character and layers and depth and the old world look. How much you tap, it's totally up to you. But here I feel my paint is already drying so I'm going to spray some more water. And that is going to help me lift more the paint. It's very important to have water around when you're uh, working with these uh, techniques like rugging, washing, uh, water is a must. When you're doing the rugging, uh, at any moment, if you feel like some areas are missing, you can go back and add more of your color and just repeat the process. Now we're going to do some stenciling and for that I will be using Stick and Style Stencil by Redesign with Prima. This is the stencil that sticks to your surface. Uh, it's very easy to stencil this way. So I will be doing some stenciling on the drawers and on the doors. So you get the stencil, it comes out in a roll like this. 
and this side is sticky. Nothing too much, but good and enough to stick to the surfaces. First, I'm going to see how much I need so I can cut it. I'm going to stick it to the drawer. And as you can see, you can peel it back and reapply it. So it's really nice and easy to use. So now that I have my stencil where I want it, I will be using uh, Annie Sloan Old White. And I will just get a little bit on my brush, unload it, and go over. When stenciling, less paint is always better than too much paint on your brush. Okay, so I'm leaving on purpose some area uh, not full because I want to uh, create that faded look with the stencil because I'm planning to turn this piece into a bohemian glam. So. Now we're going to leave this. And that is so pretty, really pretty and really easy. Uh, I'm going to go again with the same stencil, with the same one I cut already. There is no need to, uh, for me to cut more because this is still usable. So we are going again. We're going to do exact same thing. Position your stencil. I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to do the other door and by the time I'm done with this door, I can move on to this. Okay, so I use this one four times and I'm having a buildup uh, of white paint in corners and uh, also it's not sticking any good uh, anymore as good. So, but the main reason why I'm going to cut another one is because of these little buildups around here. Um, it's just getting messed up. So it's time to cut a new piece. So now I'm going to fix these uh, areas that I went over with stenciling and that I'm going to do with a brush that I use for the base color. I didn't wash it last night, I wrapped it up because uh, when I'm doing layering techniques, I always save the brush for the next day in case I have to fix something. So this brush is loaded uh, still, but not too much, just enough to, to fix this problem. So we're just going over there. And now we're going to go on the side. You don't want to apply too much paint, but whatever is left on the brush is just enough to fix our problems. And now I'm going to go over this stencil and lightly sand it for a faded look. And now I'm going to make a watery paint again with old white because I'm going to add another layer of rugging. I'm going to do another rugging uh, on top of everything because I want even more depth, more character, more layers. So I'm just really having fun and trying to create a beautiful bohemian piece of furniture. And hopefully at the end I can add some glam into it. My 
my paint is so thick because it's at the end so I have to pour it like this there we go ragging technique is really similar uh, to a wash technique uh, just instead of wiping back and forth in straight uh, strokes, you tap with a rug. So it's very similar. Uh, this one is called rugging because you're using a rug and you're tapping. The other is called wash, but it's really similar techniques. So we're going to repeat the process now. Get some paint on there. And I'm going lighter with the white, as you can see. and you just keep on going until you like it. I really love adding white to this. I think it, I think it adds more character to this piece. I think it looks prettier now. So I'm very happy. I decided to go with another layer. And you can keep on adding layers as much as you want. There is really not wrong in this technique, very forgivable technique, easy to fix if you mess up. You should avoid the drips because this is what it's going to give you. And that doesn't look good. So if you have a drip, go over and get rid of it. This is looking gorgeous. I love it so much. There is layers of cocoa underneath. You can see it through, it's coming through then white, then the stress stencil. I really love this. The only thing I'm going to add is a little bit of cocoa using this little brush. And I'm going to just go over the edges to kind of create some shading because you guys know that I love shading. And I'm using the same rug that is wet and I'm going to tap over it and make it faded. Look at this so easy and so pretty this is so fun to do and i will definitely be doing more rugging techniques rugging technique in the future I'm done ragging, the piece is completely dry. I always suggest you leave your piece dry overnight when you're activating and when you're using uh, wet techniques. So now we can uh, protect all this, put new hardware and do some more things. But first we have to put protection. And for that I'm using clear wax and waxing brush and a microfiber cloth. This is very easy. Work your wax in the piece, wipe the extra off, and it's simple as that. You go over if you miss some areas. It's going to deepen your color. As you can see, this side is much darker than this side. And now you can see the cocoa uh, uh, layer coming through more visibly than before. So I like it a lot.
All I have left to do is uh, put some vintage gold uh, wax by Redzina with Prima and add the hardware at the end and we will be all done. All we have left to do is attach this beautiful hardware that I got on Amazon. And I got this months ago and I was saving it for the right project, which is this one. So I'm so excited to use this. It's so beautiful. It's a natural wood handle with a gold. And I think it's matching this project perfect. So let's attach that. And we're done with this beautiful piece. I love it so much. It's a little bit of boho a little bit of old world, a little bit of glam. I had so much fun uh, using this technique, uh, creating layers, uh, and I just love this challenge so much. So again, Christina, thank you so much for doing this with me. This was so fun and we will definitely be doing this uh, again. If you want to see how Christina piece turned out, make sure to go her, to her channel and check out what she did. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time with a new project and more ideas. Bye guys. I wanted that boho, old world glam vibe, and I love it. Oh, blended that perfectly. You took all those styles and you mirrored and married everybody so beautifully. That was the goal, and it was, I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do that, you know? But oh my God. yeah, that's what I did, and the same on the top. I had fun with ragging. Yeah, I think that's the fun part about the challenge, though, is just seeing what other ideas you can exercise in what you already do. Do. Mm -hmm. It's because you already have kind of an imprint of what you already create. Mm -hmm. When somebody else is giving you a new concept, a technique, a color frame to kind of focal out of what you normally do, you're still going to want to bring a little bit of what you do. And that's what makes it fun.